Okay, so hi, Norm. We're here for our weekly questions about shamanism or shamanic arts. And why don't you go ahead and uh, introduce yourself, Norm, and tell people how they can contact you if they want to. Uh, I'm Dr. Norman Wilson, and I am a shaman. I am not a Native American. I was trained by a Micmac healer beginning back in the 1940s. So I've been around for a while, <laughs> uh, which is kind of interesting. I have many books published on shamanism and uh, what a shaman does, what it means, etc. And I also have a, a healing product company that I call Healing the Shaman's Way. And I do healing on people using various things, sound, essential oils, uh, mm, hands-on, whatever. <laughs> so uh, shamanism has been a long time thing with me uh, we didn't call it shamanism in my day I was just learning how to take care of myself and what things in nature that I could use to heal myself uh, or to how to survive in the woods uh, if I ran out of water or food or things of that nature rather than a lot of the things that now people equate with shamanism which was not shamanism Traditionally, uh, shamanism, uh, every, let me put it this way, every American tribe has their own language and has their own word for their healer. Right. And so, and, and some of them, I think, feel it's disrespectful, but I think they've gotten used to the idea that's what people will recognize. And right. they're not being disrespectful using that. We certainly are not. Uh, <laughs> okay, so anyway, we have a, an avid interest in helping people, and that's what shamanism is all about. Mm -hmm. And uh, try to help people heal themselves. And it's not an alternative medicine, it's a supportive medicine that I offer. And the same way with the things you, you do also. So, right. okay, a question, do we? I see somebody's name up there, Omis. Yes, hi, Omis. You want to turn on your camera, or you don't have to, that's fine. Okay. Um, I'm Julia Whitup, and I'm the founder and chief operating officer of the Shamanic Arts Center. I do um, past life regressions, mostly, and art, alchemical artwork. Mm -hmm. So that's mostly what I do, but I also am the go-to person for the Shamanic Arts Center, which in involves being the webmaster and <laughs> everything practically. So um, I would recommend that anybody who's more interested in what we do, go to our website at shamanicarts.center. Mm -hmm. So I guess we're gonna talk about dream work this morning or this afternoon, it's afternoon here. Mm -hmm. And um, Omnis is turning on his audio. Maybe we'll have him introduce himself. Do you want to? No, he doesn't want to. <laughs> okay. So um, the, we did have one question already about um, lucid dreaming because I had mentioned that uh, lucid dreaming and he wanted to know what... It's a difference. The there How is. you can oh. tell a lucid dream from a regular dream. And also a trance. <laughs> right. Uh, you know. Um, okay. I uh, guess. Let's, yeah, let's just begin with the word dreaming. Uh, okay. Let's get that out of the way. Uh, dreaming is a very complex uh, phenomenon. Then it occurs during sleep. Okay, and uh, it involves consciousness to a degree, uh, a conscious experience, let's put it that way. Lucid dreaming, on the other hand, uh, involves heightened awareness within the dream environment. Okay, so it really becomes, lucid dream becomes where you, the dreamer, are in control of the dream. Makes a big difference. Got it? Okay, so that, that's one thing that we want to be... And you're aware that you're dreaming. Yes, you're very much aware of it, and you're in control of it. 
the other one is the out of body experience uh, that uh, was asked by uh, Omar, Omas, excuse me. Um, it involves uh, sensations that uh, are outside of the physical body, that you're outside of the physical body. Whereas dreaming and uh, lucid dreaming, you do not feel that way. Uh, you don't feel like you're traveling from one place to another, one dimension to another, if you want to call it that way, one universe to another. Um, and it uh, can be quite emotional to suddenly realize you are somewhere else uh, for the first time around. Um, out of body experiences involve the sensations uh, involving the physical body and everything about the physical body. We also have deep sleep paralysis, by the way. I don't think that he asked that question, but it's involved with that concept anyway, uh, where our voluntary movements are inhibited by, uh, during the sleep-wake transition, which, which is we're very uncomfortable. We seem almost caught, can't move. Um, I think, one of the things that we're often told to do, and I, I don't do this, simply because I can't, <laughs> is to take notes on your dream, uh, to remember your dream. Now, in lucid dreaming, you can probably do that, and I can. I have a pretty good memory of what I was doing during uh, lucid dreaming. It's just a regular dream. I may have a fragment of my mind. What did I dream about? Oh, yeah, I was thinking about that ends it, and I really don't take detailed notes on that. So it's a question of individual choice, and, and taste that, <clears throat> excuse me, I suspect in taking down notes and remembering what the dreams. Out of bottom my experience is another thing altogether. Uh, as a shaman, I am able to do that, uh, to go on an out of body experience, uh, to travel somewhere to another dimension, if you will. And I guess kind of, you know, I don't want to use that phrase, but it's not woo-woo. It is not. It's self-hypnosis. Uh, to go into a dream state of that nature, you have a, a drumming sound. I use drums, and they're recorded, so I don't have to have a drummer drumming for me. Uh, or some people are able to drum themselves and go into that state. Uh, and I'm not talking about using hallucinant drugs now. Uh, some cultures do, and that's that's why I'm not making I'm making a drug judgment on that. Uh, I think um, we have to be cognizant of those things uh, if we are going out an out of body experience now. And I used to take my college students on an out of body experiences on mass. And I can relate some experiences from that. The other thing is I haven't done that. I used to do that in lectures when I was lecturing around. And that's been oh several years since I've done that. And uh, you have to be careful because uh, people sometimes react. Uh, maybe I would share this one. I don't know whether I've shared this with you before in the past or not, Julia. If I have, I ask you to forgive me. I took my college class of freshmen onto a out of body experience. And it's timed and so it's regulated. Anybody who didn't want to participate could leave the classroom without punishment, you know, extra assignments or any of that thing. Strictly a, a voluntary thing. And at the end of that, one lady began sobbing, one of the young women in the class, just crying terribly. And I stopped the whole thing immediately and asked her if she would like to tell me what was going on. And she said, yes, I, I, I'm not crying because I'm sad. I'm relieved, finally, I know the answer. I said, well, she said, well, as you know, I've been in the hospital for the automobile accident and uh, for quite some time. And I wanted to know how it's come I survived and my fiance did not. And she said, I now know. Wow. He threw himself over me to save my life. Oh, oh my God. So this, she really felt um, 
of total relief from knowing. So that has happened. So you have to be kind of careful when you take people out of out of mind body experience, uh, because they may go back and relive in past time and experience. Right. That that may be a trauma for them, or it may not always be a relief. So I'm very sensitive about that, setting the stage, and governing that. Um, my first experience, I'll tell you this, with an out-of-body experience, I used one of the audio tapes back in the day. They had not CDs, but audio <laughs> tapes. And uh, I was sitting in my living room, and I woke up, and I saw myself, and I had a full beard then. And I really did. And I thought, what an ugly-looking thing you are. <laughs> I got woke up and I went and shaved it off. I, <laughs> I really did. I shaved it right off. So anyway, uh, that was the end of a beard effort, I guess. But you do, and you sometimes have experiences that are all very positive that give you an outlook. But generally, a shaman, when you go into an out-of-body experience and to travel, you're going to get help for a client and to find an answer for a client's problem or their issue, either physical or mental or emotional. And you travel very carefully when you go into the other world. And uh, that may be a topic for another time. How do you behave when you travel to another dimension? So you may can make a note of that one. That's so good. I think. And we have a question in the chat okay. room. Mm -hmm. I was told that one can get lost when performing an out-of-body experience. Is this true? Yes, it is. And that's that's a good one. And that would evolve to the question, how do you behave during an out-of-body experience? There's a protocol. Uh, you don't just go wandering around and say, hey, I'm on a tour and just show me a good time. All right. So you're, you're dealing with the spirit world and they are sensitive uh, and they are offended. And if you get offended, you can get lost, as, as the question is. Uh, in ancient mythology, uh, and uh, one of the kings and his compatriot went on a trip to the underworld. And they did not follow the protocol, and the, the comrade was not allowed to come back. In Greek mythology, uh, there's an example of a mother follows to find her daughter in the underworld, and she doesn't follow, and neither of them are allowed to come back. They have to stay in the underworld, they stay wherever they are. So there are things you have to do. You are polite, well-mannered, and you have a very specific purpose. You don't go on a tour. You're not out for a good time. And if that's what the purpose is, then you could get lost. You can come back, but if you would need some help there, you aren't lost forever. But it can be kind of a frightening experience. Mm -hmm. uh, I have not had that experience of being lost. So I, I don't know. Do you know of anyone who has, uh, Julia? No. I, it's a, it's I've kind of always side. thought those out of, out of what people call an out-of-body experience might be a lucid dream. Uh, it's an, uh, yes, it is, unless you do it yourself through hypnosis and you're going out of that. Uh, to uh, go for a very specific purpose, visiting another dimension. Uh, it's very intense. Uh, as a person who wants to go to uh, talk to the spirit world, I have what they call a talking stick. Mm -hmm. Are you familiar with that one? Mm -hmm. Okay, and you're knocking on the door to allow yourself in uh, to go... Um, if you're just doing an out-of-body experience uh, with some of the tapes, those tapes and the CDs, the videos now, are all programmed to bring you back. So it'd be mm -hmm. very rare, I think, for you to get lost unless you're playing around yourself and not knowing what you're doing. I suppose you could do that. It's kind of unusual. I don't know of anyone that's ever gotten lost. Other than in mythology, you know, and in well, Egyptian the, and Amnes yeah. wants to know how you come back if the soul is lost. I don't oh. believe you can lose your you can lose parts of your soul, but you can't lose you your can soul. Your whole, yeah, you can have your soul stolen from you. You can. I thought we dealt with that at one point in time. Uh, 
the shaman would go to help you get your your soul back. And when the soul is treated, he has a, a helper, usually an animal spirit, it can be a human spirit, to locate where the soul is. Then the shaman bargains for the release of that part of the soul or the whole soul if it's been stolen for a mean purpose. When he comes back, he gets that soul. He brings it back to the client and puts it here on the forehead and literally blows it back into the person's body. It's a physical act. Okay. You do. And so it's, 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 it's another thing, again, also, like I've said, I think last time, a mother will keep a part of her son's soul when he goes get married. She's a, he's a part of her and she keeps a part. Without really doing any means, but there's always something lacking in him. And so uh, a shaman will identify that a part of the soul is missing. Or there is, are evil spirits uh, that could attack you. And we've talked about being attacked, have we not? Yeah, we a little bit. We talked yeah. about that last well, week. Yeah, that's maybe another topic. Because that is a very help. That definitely happens. Right. And so do you where you have been attacked by an external being. Mm -hmm. Well, oh, well I, I wanted to make a question or not. comment yeah. about lucid dreaming. Mm -hmm. You can't mm -hmm. always totally control it. Uh, no. Sometimes not, things uh, you want to do, it won't mm -hmm. happen. Mm -hmm. I remember one uh, lucid dream I had. I didn't even know I was dreaming at first. But mm -hmm. then I noticed that the trees in my driveway, the trees along my driveway were gone. And I thought, whoa, I must be dreaming because I know we never cut those trees down. Uh -huh. And uh, so I thought, well, I'm going to try to fly and see if I can fly because I'm dreaming. And I did. I just took off like Superman and wrote, flew all around. And I flew over this building that had a big uh skylight mm -hmm. and i start i fell i fell through the skylight and i couldn't stop myself it really freaked me out because i thought you could control the whole dream all the time mm -hmm. uh that's a question there's no Are question sure really i'm lucid, just saying you're that sure. I, huh? yeah, your show was lucid dreaming because I, yeah I, I, yeah i, I, I was dreaming of... I've not heard of lucid dreaming not being controlled by the dreamer. Well, that's why it scared me. And I actually haven't had a lucid dream since because mm -hmm. it scared me. Mm hmm. Hmm. Uh, you got me. I don't have an answer for that. Because um, I thought, oh, I thought you could always control everything in a lucid dream. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I, Okay, let's talk about going doing lucid dreaming. There, you can do this. By the way, there are there are uh, herbs that you can use to mm -hmm. help you dream. Uh, I'm going to name a couple here. One is uh, wild asparagus root. Wild asparagus root. Yes. And mugwort. Hmm. Mugwort. Mugwort is another one, and uh, valerian. Now, valerian, of course, you know, we know is a tranquilizer also. Used oh, I didn't know it helped with lucid dreaming, though. Yeah. That valerian root. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, uh, by the way, uh, I was not half awake. I was definitely totally asleep. Mm -hmm. So then maybe it was a nightmare. Uh, it didn't seem it's, like it. So close. No, I knew me. I was dreaming. I mean, I mm -hmm. think a lucid dream is the same as a regular dream, but you know that you're dreaming. Yes, and you control the dream. So okay. you say. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, you're not, uh, you control what's going on within the dream. To um, some extent. So the other things uh, that, but uh, one of the other things you can use ghost pipe, by the way. Uh, to help you within the lucid dream or with the dream works. It's sometimes called Indian pipe. Are you familiar with that one? Indian pipe. Uh, ghost pipe is another name for it. It's, uh, and you're smoking what? You're, you it can use it as an essential oil. Uh, 
kind of thing. Um, it's been used in cultures around the world forever. Um, it's used particularly if you want a lucid dream. Um, now, what was that again? Ghost pipe. Ghost pipe. Yes, it's it's a, a plant, and it's made with um, a non-alcoholic alcohol. <laughs> Not the kind. Non-alcoholic <laughs> alcohol. There's no such a thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's used also for protection against negative energy. It's a, it's a helpful thing. Uh, ghost pipe is. Um, ghost pipe. I'm going to write that down in the message thing so I'll remember it because it's, yeah, it's also called Indian pipe, and it's a plant. It grows wild, but it has a lot of protective properties, and it also is used for connecting to the spirit world. By the way. Hmm. Interesting. In, in spiritual ceremonies. Mm hmm. Um. Oh, connected maybe some people say to your higher self. <laughs> if you your your inner soul, if you want to call it that way, I think it might be a good way to do it. I had uh, a really interesting experience one night. I dreamt that I dreamt that I was driving a 18 wheeler. <laughs> I've never driven an 18 wheeler <laughs> in my life, but I'm driving this 18 wheeler. And mm -hmm. everything starts kind of dripping and and looking really weird and I thought oh my god I must be having a, a flashback mm -hmm. to a acid trip and I <laughs> thought wow I never believed in flashbacks mm -hmm. and I woke up and I start I went to the bathroom to write down my dream I always do that to keep from waking mm -hmm. up my husband and uh I started thinking oh maybe it was a Maybe somebody gave me acid at that last truck stop. Mm -hmm. And then I thought, or maybe I'm going crazy. <laughs> I just got to think of all the different Well, they're probably. They're probably <laughs> <laughs> and I'm thinking all these things and I'm realizing, wait a minute, it was a dream. <laughs> you know? But uh, it really was quite intense mm -hmm. now you can have really intense dreams like that i think and they are dreams uh and they could be provoked by any number of things like you know you may have stomped at a truck stop <laughs> uh, i've never uh, driven an 18 wheeler before i've never driven an 18 wheeler and it just impressed you in some way yeah <laughs> that's kind of wild um okay let's come back to these three things and I think sometimes people confuse the three, uh, dreams, daydreaming, uh, quote, nightmares, and uh, lucid dreaming, uh, or out-of-body experience. Mm -hmm. um, out-of-body but... experience is not something to play with. I know people go to the jungles and take the drug that they have to have these experiences, and they go off for hours on end. Um, Oh, for uh, ayahuasca and stuff. Yes, and uh, you know, I'm not, I don't approve of that. And I have friends who are shaman and who have lived in the jungles forever, uh, as shaman and shamanic healers believe in that. In fact, I t talked to one yesterday in Tokyo, and oh. uh, so I had just come back from the jungles, I guess, in Venezuela. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, no, no, I think that uh, a certain person can do that. Other people can't. They may really be, have a serious mental damage uh, by going on those drugs. I think you can do things naturally. They say, well, okay, drumming, okay, fine. Yeah, but that's a drug, isn't it? Yeah, well, no, I mean, no, no, I consider not. a drug yeah, something yeah, that okay. you ingest. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, mm -hmm. I understand. I'm a I'm a mental health counselor. Yes, I know you are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a retired mental health counselor, and I have had people who were um, took some of these powerful drugs, and because they had a family history of mental illness, they triggered a mental mm -hmm. illness episode. So that is the problem. If you have 
any kind of family history like that and you do those powerful drugs, it can trigger things in you that you didn't know were in there. Yeah, and may also have a lasting negative effect. Is that correct? Uh, well, you know, some yeah. people never come back. They go I, on an acid trip they, and never come back. They never, they never regain who they were. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I agree with you on that, a hundred percent. That's that's a good reason why I'm opposed to using those kinds of drugs for uh, tripping. Well, yeah. LSD, remember LSD? Oh yeah, I've done LSD hundreds of times, but I don't do it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I I, I won't. <laughs> I will make those for the statement. <laughs> okay. So did you were, uh, I'll ask you this question. I will. Uh, when you were on one of these LSD trips, did you ever do any painting? Painting? Because I know that. Yeah, painting. No, Artwork. I never tried doing that while I was tripping. Okay. We were just out for a <laughs> little. <laughs> I, I just wanted to see what it was like, and then I liked it, so I kept doing it. But um over Why the years ha, um well i couldn't find any for a long mm -hmm. time i didn't know anybody who had any mm -hmm. and then i when i became a counselor i became a drug and alcohol counselor and i felt like it would be it would not be appropriate for me to be doing drugs while i was counseling people not to do them people who are trying to stop and people who are having trouble with their drug use and so on. So I stopped. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then I just never went back into it. Mm -hmm. I've thought about the ayahuasca, but I thought, you know, I do have mental illness in my family. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to trigger anything. Yeah. Not, you not necessarily would, but you could. Mm -hmm. I understand. I that. could, yeah. Probably not, because I've done so many drugs. <laughs> okay. But uh, maybe I just think I've gotten more sensitive over the years. I've mm -hmm. done a couple of times. I've done mushrooms lately because they're legal here in Colorado now, mm -hmm. and I'm really sensitive to them now, much more than I used to be. What mushrooms specifically? Huh? Which mushrooms? I don't know, psychedelic mushrooms. Oh, okay. Not any specific one, you know, like, uh, I can't think of any either. Amanita. No, no, one I was thinking of it anyway. I've never they're done popular Amanita. Now. They're popular being used for the treatment of cancer. Some of the mushrooms and other things like that. So there's a different variety of them, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Well, there, yeah, there are thousands of varieties of mushrooms. Mm -hmm. But, uh, how about using dark sweat rooms to perform an out-of-body experience? I've um, also done hundreds of sweat lodges, but I never uh, never had an out-of-body experience in one. I don't know of anybody that has that. I, I have mixed feelings about sweat lodges. Uh, and you know about the, the deaths in Arizona when they wouldn't let the people out and they died. Yes, well, I don't oh, think... Oh, so, well, that was conduct I don't think that was conducted by a person who really knew and understood a sweat lodge. It definitely was not. Yeah, and I for think for one thing they had it. plastic tarps. Oh, and yeah. that's a no no. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I think the original sweat lodge was a spiritual thing. It still is. And it should be, you know, not uh not let's do this because it's fun. Entertain me. Well, yeah, I think there are a lot of people who just want to have a, their notches. I've mm. done this, 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 and this. So they just add it to their thing. Yeah. Add it to their list of stuff that they've done and think mm -hmm. that it makes them more spiritual. But if you don't do it correctly, mm -hmm. it's not a spiritual experience. No, and it's the same way with uh, doing some of the things to go on an out of body experience or to journey. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a spiritual thing and it's not a, it's disrespectful if you do it otherwise and that's how people get into trouble yes mm -hmm. yes you and, should uh, be do it only with somebody who's a qualified 
Um, yeah, I have a, a friend of mine who is a retired professor at one of the universities here in the state of Washington and is a shaman mm -hmm. and has lived in Indonesia and all those things for years and uh, does not allow that without people being guided by her and uh, very, very, very specific. Right. No, no part. We're not partying. Right. Right. Yeah. So I think uh, I don't know. Um, people look for an escape because they have issues that they haven't been able to deal with. Wow, this is a we might have to make this uh show longer because it's actually 431 now. Um <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so do we want to make well, we this can, we can come back for another session if you want. Uh let, let's go on with this further next week. Mm -hmm, okay. We'll talk we can, about this further next week and uh, more about ghost pipe and some of the other things that people can use that are safe. Yeah, I mm -hmm. will uh, see if I can I can actually put some things on here that people could download. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like directions on how to have a I've taught a lot of people how to lucid dream and I'll just quickly say what I tell people to do. Okay, let's do that. And I would be wonderful if you put that on the link. I, great. You can do yeah. that. Okay. okay. All right. So next week we'll cover lucid dreaming once again. Okay. And uh, invite your friends and we'll see you next don't, week. Don't forget, it, don't forget that it's on YouTube. Yes. And we're Tell uploading them where they can this. Get it on YouTube. We will upload this to YouTube. Okay. Thank Thanks very you. much. And have a great day. It was nice talking with you again. And thanks for the people who signed in and asked questions. Yes, Bye now. thank you, Omnis. Mm -hmm. Bye now. Bye. I'm trying to.